Okay, so let's have a look at step number seven, adjust for other expenses and gains. So in this question, if you want to identify what they are, just have a look and see if there's any expenses or gains at the start of the question. So we've got one here, three months premises insurance prepaid, 440 or 430. If you look down to the questions, we'll have premises insurance premium 300. And do anything at the end? No, we don't. So we've got a prepaid amount here of 340, and then we paid more than 3,000. So we we'll add those two together, and we we'll get 3,430. This 430 is three months, so we only need another nine months, and it's 3,000. So it's going to be 3,000 multiplied by nine twelves, gives us 2,250. That's all we need for this year. So we've overpaid by 750 for the following period. So you're going to take your 3430, take away 750, that's going to go into your balance sheet as a current asset, and then your expense then for your insurance is going to be 2680. Anything else we've got due up here, we've got wages due, so that's going to go into your general expenses. So your general expenses in this question are 22,500. You're going to take away your wages due of 1,200. That was from the previous period. So that's going to give us 21,300, and that's going to go into your expense. Then have a look at the other one. So that's all your dues and prepayments up there. And then down here, we've got heating oil, and we've got electricity due. So we need to do an adjustment on that. So our lightning heat, as per the question, is 4,600. We have got stock of heating oil of 500. So we need to reduce that. So our lightning heating is going to be 4,100 because we have 500 left over that we didn't use. So it's going to reduce the amount that we pay for it. Then we're going to have electricity due that has to be repaid in this period. So that's going to be added on. So that's going to give us 4,740. That is, electricity due will be in your liability because we need to pay it. Remember these questions that we divide it up for certain expenses will be for drawings. And so we want for this one here, it says that 25% of light and heat used should be attributed to the private section of the building. So we used 7,714. So you're going to get 25% of that, which is 1,185. That's going to go into your drawings. So you can reduce the expense by that amount, and that's going to give us 3,555. That's going to be your expense. Also, do you adjust in here for closing stock? So 15,500. Take away the heating oil, because that wasn't part of our closing stock. For purchases, part of our closing stock for our light and heat. So it gives us closing stock of 15,000. Then other adjustments, let's see if there's any adjustments for drawings. So it said um, rent was in respect to the giant building rented by these guys, rented by Kelly. And the first of the eight is paid in advance, and Kelly estimates that half of the building was used for private residence. So let's see if where's our rent. So we got rent for one year of 22,800, so that's kind of paid in advance. Half of that was for private dwelling, so you can get half of it. So 11,400 would go into drawings, and 11,400 would be for your expense. So we start renting this in August, so we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've five months for this year, and the rest then is going to be a prepaid amount. So 5 twelfths of 11,400 is 4,750. That's your expense for this year. And what's left over then, take the 4,750, take away from 11,400, that's going to be your prepaid amount that goes into your balance sheet. The current 
there's no more adjustments for gains or expenses. So then you're going to make your adjustments for drawings. Just take all the drawing figures that you have together, put them down into a little adjustment, just add them up. And then that will give you a drawings figure. Okay, so let's do the next step, which is your profit and loss account. Make sure that you write in your heading, go to Max Bunford. So your sales, with that already done as part of your calculating your total sales. So 205,750. That's cost of sales, your opening stock, taken straight from the question, 14,300. Had your purchases. So that was your next working that we did after calculating our total sales. So 78,140. Add them together and then take away your closing stock. Remember we did an adjustment on that when we calculate our likely heat. So 15,000. Take it away. So your gross profit then will be 128,330. So you're going to take your goods available for resale away from your sales. So the 205,770. Take away 77,440. Was profit then of 128,330. Then we're going to take away our expenses. So let's have a look at the gains that we had. So the first expense then we're going to have interest. So which is 3,600. You have your insurance, which is at just steps number seven, 2,680. Then you're going to have your general expenses, which is another step seven, 21,300. Light and heat then, which is after that, which is 3,550. Your rent, which is the next adjustment that we did, which is 4,750. And then remember your charity donations. So we're donating here, standing order, charitable organization. 2,500, it's an expense, so it's going to go in here. So you can add all your expenses up together. That's going to give you one figure, 38,385. You're going to take that away from your gross profit, 128,330. And that's going to give you your net profit of 89,945. That figure then is going to be brought across to your balance sheet. Okay, so let's have a look at the balance sheet then, so once again, it's balance sheet for eCali as that. So you've got your fixed assets, your costs, your cumulative depreciation, and your net value. So the premises, as per the question, 174,000. You're going to add on the premises that we bought. So we bought the premises for 60,000. So that's going to give us 234,000. Equipment then, we bought equipment, bank payment, 30,000. And your van then, we also bought a van, 32,000. So you're going to add them up. 296,000. We don't have any depreciation, so your net value then is 296,000. Goodwill then that we calculated as part of step one, 20,670. So we go back here with the statement of capital, 20,670. We don't have any financial income in or financial investments here, so we don't have to include them. So we go straight into your current assets. So your clothing stock, as we calculated previously with our light and heat. It's going to be 15,000. Your debtors, 16,600. Your cash, 550. Your bank, that we calculated as part of our steps. So step number three, 10,100. Insurance, that we did as part of step number seven, which is any gains or expenses, 700. That's prepaid 750. And your rent, so we calculate there as well. Current asset, 6,650. So you're going to add them up, you're going to get 50,150. 
Your next item is going to be your creditors due. So call them in one year. So your creditors, 13,300. Your interest in, that we need to pay. Twelve hundred. So you got your loan repayment of twelve thousand, so your two six month or six thousand so that needs to be paid, and then electricity due then here. Remember to include your loan repayment. It's a little bit different from the two thousand fifteen question. Add the four from up, you get twenty eight thousand one hundred and forty. Take it away from fifty thousand one hundred and fifty, you get twenty thousand and ten. It's gonna be added on to your fixed assets which is 338,608. Your finance buy then, so the loan that you have to repay after one year, it's going to be 60,000. We introduced our dividends of 3,600. Capital then to purchase the buildings, 205. Your net profit then from the previous question, 89,945 and then your drawings from our last working where we just took all the drawings for about 19,865 you're going to take that away from the 209,854 and that gives you 278,680 added on to your 600 and your finance buy section 328,680 so the two million pounds okay the last part then bit of theory once again, taken straight from the marketing scheme for 2013, what additional information would be available if Kelly's accounts were prepared using the double entry system? So these are all the figures that you get if you use a double entry. So you'd be able to calculate your total sales figures, your total purchases figure, you'd be able to produce a trial balance, the bank balance, the capital and drawing, goodwill, any bad debts, expenses to prepaids, any general non-ledger accounts, so there your T accounts that needs to be balanced off to calculate your trial balance. So books of first entry, from there then to go into your ledger accounts, your general ledger, nominal ledger, creditor's ledger, debtor's ledger, and from them then they're balanced off to help you produce the trial balance. But you'll be able to have exact figures, so you won't be using any estimates, you won't be using bits and pieces to produce your profit and loss account and your balance sheets. You won't have any incomplete records.